Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. So for today's video, we're playing with some new makeup, some new to me, but most importantly, we are going to play with this Tom Ford Mink Mirage eyeshadow palette here. I also have the absolute brand new Givenchy Irresistible Perfume right here. What else do I have? I have some Dior, I have more Tom Ford, I have some new Guerlain. It's going to be lots of fun. But before we go any further, let's take a second to grab our iced coffee or a hot coffee. Let's take a sip and let's get started. Now, as you know, I have my online beauty consulting service, which is where you get the chance to talk to me one-on-one -on -one through a Zoom, and we get to talk about makeup one-on-one. -on -one. So if you have an extensive makeup collection and you just want like a fresh set of eyes, some inspiration, some ideas on how to use up what you already own, that is the perfect opportunity. That is the perfect time to book a consultation. Or if you would like some advice on skincare or makeup, but you don't want that sales pressure that you find at a store that is also a perfect opportunity for a consultation so just go ahead and click the link down below that is my website there is a schedule and calendar you can go ahead and pick the date and time that works best for you all right mink mirage i have been teasing this on my instagram for a few days now maybe a week or two I think it's absolutely beautiful. When I look at this palette, do you know what I see? I see a box of chocolate. I see like dark chocolate, milk chocolates, a white chocolate. I think it's great. This is described online as a neutral smoky palette. And off the bat, when you look at it, it just looks like a perfect, easy, neutral, everyday, very workplace appropriate very professional looking palette. This is the type of makeup that when you see it in the palette itself, it doesn't necessarily look super inspiring perhaps, but this is the type of product that always looks incredibly beautiful and polished when you do wear it. Here are some swatches of the palette here. So all four are a beautiful matte formula. They are not dry. It's like a nice, slightly buttery finish and texture, and they feel fabulous when you swatch them, and they also wear very nicely. I have been wearing this off camera just to test it out, and it feels and looks and blends wonderfully. Now, something to note, there are some new Tom Ford Eye quads on the market, and I ordered the Rose Topaz palette, which should arrive today, perhaps as I'm filming. So what I will do is maybe this video will go out first, or maybe the Rose Topaz will go out first, just depending on when my other palette arrives, because I know a lot of you also want to see the new palette in action, but basically it's going to be a Tom Ford week apparently. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with this shade over here. Please excuse my nail polish. I don't know what happened, but this week my nail polish just decided to chip away. So I'm gonna go into that color here with a big fluffy brush. And this color here is actually quite close to my skin tone, maybe a little bit darker. So it's just going to be a transition shade and I'm going to just sort of buff this all over the lid. My eyelids were pr uh, primed off camera with the NARS Pro Prime Eyeshadow Primer. It's my absolute favorite. I know that every brand has their own eyeshadow primer, but in my opinion, the NARS one is the best. All right, now I'm going into the matte dark chocolate over here, and I'm going to use one of the little sponge tip applicators that came with. I actually like these. They're good for just like placing product. These are not great for um, swiping or blending product, but if you just need to transfer some color, and as you can see, it's very intense, it's very opaque, a little bit goes a long way. So I'm using the sponge to apply the color like this, and then we're going in with something else to blend. Now going into this color here, I'm going to use a flat brush and just lay this light color on the lid here. What's really nice is that every single color is so opaque. It takes very little product on the brush to get 
the exact shade that you want. It's so, it's so nice. It's such a nice quality palette. And then going into the last final color here, with a very tapered blending brush, I'm just taking some product, knocking off a lot of the excess, and I'm basically just going back over that dark color and I'm going to blend it out a little bit because I want it to be like slightly smoky, but I think I'm going to wear a red lipstick too, so nothing too, too intense. And then just blending this out like this. Placing that more dark chocolatey brown on top of the black definitely warms it up a little bit and also makes it a bit more neutral like you can see more of that like stark contrast between just like the black and white smoky and a little bit of the richer brown so this palette is extremely versatile you could do just like a really intense matte smoky eye with just the black and do that or if you wanted to like if the matte black intimidates you pretend it doesn't exist like look at the other three neutral colors and those are very very versatile every day there's a neutral for every skin tone it's really great and then the black you could use to add as like eyeliner or very sparsely if you want to like smoke it up or deepen it but don't be scared if you're thinking of getting the palette and the matte black is the one you're not sure how to use, you don't have to use it every single day. Now I'm taking my big brush from before and I'm just sort of going over top here just to soften this a bit and blend it out. But what's really nice is that, like I said, all the colors are so opaque. Like that white color stays white. Everything is just really great. This is really a wonderful quality like it's just the price that you pay it makes a difference and you can see why the price tag is what it is now i'm dipping back into the black eyeshadow and i'm just going to trace this under the bottom lashes here and i'm going to do the same also with that warm chocolatey brown just to match the colors that i mixed on top here as well So I like this light color, but it's a little bit stark for me. So I'm just going to go into this color here and just add a tiny bit on this part of the eye just to make it a little bit more neutral. Now I do have a little bit of fallout here. I think it's mostly from the dark a matte black shadow but other than that there really isn't that much fallout so it's more just if you use the darker shades which makes sense so I'm just going to clean this up a little bit and then I'm going to do the mascara off camera I'm using the volume de Chanel because it's my favorite now for the foundation I'm going into my Chanel number no. one foundation I'm in the shade B40 this is like I want to say I don't want to say all-time favorite I mean, it's a strong favorite in so many ways. It's so wonderful. This came out with a number one collection, you know, the one that's makeup and skincare that's infused with the camellia oil extract. It's so beautiful. It's so natural. It's so lightweight. It's fluid. It's buildable, but it's very natural. My skin, but better. I mean, Chanel, in my opinion, is known for like their fabulous foundations. And this one here, like I have so many that I love from the brand, but I think this one might be my favorite. Out of all my foundations, possibly. Like it's just, it's wonderful. Look at this, it's so easy to blend. And you can tell that I have makeup on, but it's still so natural. Oh, it's wonderful. I'm so happy with this collection here. It's so great. Now, for the concealer, I went ahead and finally picked up the Dior Forever Skin Corrector uh, Concealer. This is the shade 2WP. Now, this is technically 
like a concealer slash foundation or skin corrector if you want. It looks like their foundation bottle essentially, but in a, slight, a slightly smaller format. This is a 24 hour caring full coverage creamy concealer and it's multi-use. So you could spot correct and do a full face with this or just do uh, some concealing. I'm using this shade 2WP because it has a bit of a peachy undercut to you know cut any blueness or darkness. I'm using it as, as a concealer and that is way too much product. Let me just do a little transfer over here. And for some reason, I am compelled to put this back in its box for the time being. I don't know why I'm doing this recently. I'm just keeping everything in its little box to, just to add to the element of luxury, I guess. Now, something I wanted to note, or a lot of you asked me about, is this Tom Ford Mink Mirage, to a lot of people and myself, looks similar to another palette here, specifically from Charlotte Tilbury, the Sophisticate palette. This is Charlotte Tilbury, the Sophisticate. This again looks like a really basic, neutral, very professional work environment, like very, I don't know, it's called the Sophisticate for a reason. And if you look at both of these palettes, they look like cousins, you know, very distant cousins, but you can see some sort of family resemblance here. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a swatch comparison of both of these palettes. Okay, so this side here is Tom Ford, and the other side here is Charlotte Tilbury. Now, as you can see, these look very, very close. Clearly, they had the same inspiration. They were going for the same theme, just like your neutrals, but a little bit enhanced. The Charlotte Tilbury Sophisticate palette is not exactly completely matte. Specifically, the white shade and the chocolate brown seem to have a little bit of a satiny, slight luminous effect, whereas Tom Ford is all matte all four of them. Now, from what I remember with the Charlotte Tilbury palette, it was nice, like I, I do enjoy wearing it, but the Tom Ford one is more opaque. I find that Tom Ford, the color that I pick up is the exact one that I get on my eyes. I don't have to build up as much. I think Charlotte Tilbury, I had to build up way more to get the color intensity, especially the white color for some reason. I had to build that one up to get more color payoff. So if I was going to buy either one of these, like if I could only pick one, I would only pick the Tom Ford Mink Mirage. I just think you get way more color payoff. It's more opaque, it's just easier. So you spend less time applying, less time blending. Like the Charlotte Tilbury, the Charlotte Tilbury palette isn't bad, it's just not as good as Tom Ford. So I think Tom Ford for me is the winner here in the neutral smoky eyeshadow palette battle. Now for a bit of blush, I'm going into my Chanel lip and cheek stain here. This is the number one red camellia or camellia red. So I'm going to go ahead and just apply this here with a finger and then I'm going to blend this out. I think I added way too much uh give me a moment here to uh continue blending if this happens to you because guess what it's happened to the best of us you can take your foundation brush and just sort of go over a little bit just to um bring it down a little bit make it a little bit less intense you could do this with a powder brush too that had a little bit excess product left on you're not going to add more product to the brush. It's just whatever is left as excess can just help, you know, uh, stamp it down just a little bit. So this is a bit more wearable. But this does look pretty in the pot, doesn't it? Just this like really intense red. And as you can see, it is quite buildable. You can do something really sheer, but it's also just a really beautiful luminous blush. Now for the lipstick, I got something new here from Guerlain. I got a new lipstick case because why not? It's always fun to get a new one. So the case here is called Royal Burgundy. This is the box and this is the beautiful 
velvet lipstick Guerlain case. It's a felt, feels like velour or velvet, and it gives you this beautiful burgundy shade here. And then the lipstick that I picked, I don't know if it's gonna go with this whole look today, time will tell. This is the Rouge G Velvet. So it's a bullet lipstick that's a beautiful velvet soft finish, and it's number 1925. It's called Roi des Rouges, which translates to King of the Reds. So this is the color here. It's a super intense bright red lip, which I absolutely love. And I have to say, I love the Rouge G Velvet formula. If you like a bullet lipstick, you really, really should try the Guernet ones because they're so wonderful, especially the velvet. It's matte, but it's not drying and they just last all day, like eating, drinking, talking, even a mask. Like I wouldn't necessarily do like a full red lip and put on a mask, but maybe like after lunch, after you've eaten and drank and your lipsticks have, and your lipstick has sort of like, you know, uh, worn down a little bit, it's not as like movable, it'd be okay to wear a mask. It's just really impressive how incredibly long wearing it is. It almost just like stains your lip. So even once the creamy lipstick part evaporates, you still have like a full lip color left. So this is the full lipstick case here. And of course, because it's a Garnet lipstick case, you have the mirror on the inside here, which is so incredibly luxury. Let's go ahead and give the Roi des Rouges, the King of the Reds, a try. This is gorgeous. It's warm, but it's not too orange. It's just like the perfect red for me. As you can see, it's it has brightness too, but like it's just, I want to say breathtaking. It's just so gorgeous. It looks lovely. And I almost forgot, I want to add some bronzer too, but let's just take another second to look at this lipstick. I'm glad I still have some red lips or some red nail polish left on my fingers because this whole look looks really lovely. That's what's nice about going with like a more neutral eyeshadow look like this. You can pull off a really bold, intense red and the whole look is just really nice. For the bronzer, I have the Tom Ford Soleil Glow Bronzer. This is the shade number two, Terra. Again, I'm keeping this in the box for, I don't know, for fun. And it comes in a beautiful little white pouch. I love the white and gold compact. That just, to me, screams summer and just freshness here. It's a really beautiful bronzer. You have the TF Tom Ford stamp in the center, which as you can see, I have really been enjoying this bronzer here. I find that it's a nice light glow. It's not too intense, so I swirl my brush around, but then I always knock off a little bit because I don't wanna to add too much. And then I just go over basically where my uh, blush is, a little bit on my forehead, really sculpt into the cheekbone here. It's just such a healthy looking glow. Like you look naturally bronzed, not a hint of orange. The formula is not like completely matte, but there's no like sparkle or glitter particles. It's just like a beautiful luminous finish. I totally get Tom Ford makeup now. I, I, I drank the Kool-Aid. I understand the fuss about his makeup here and this glow bronzer. Like, I don't know if his bronzer is that well known, but if you haven't tried the glow bronzer and you're looking for one, like this is really nice. Now for the final step of our beauty routine, we have to go into a fragrance. That's the final touch. And I have here the new Givenchy Irresistible Eau de Toilette Fraiche. So this is the box here. It's a beautiful white with a beautiful light pastel pink. This is the bottle. The other Irresistible perfume bottles also have the same shape. I have one in the background that we can do a comparison of. And so uh, Givenchy Beauty sent this to me for free in PR, which is very lovely. Anytime I get a package from the LVMH group, it's a great day. So this is a continuation of the Irresistible perfume collection. And the one that I have here is Eau de Toilette. But the new one is Eau de Toilette Fraiche. So 
it's similar in some notes, but it also is quite different in a lot of different ways. So one thing that's important with Givenchy and one thing that I really like is that they have a commitment to sustainability and they used recycled glass to create their bottles, which is nice because oftentimes a lot of brands seem to think that sustainability and environmental causes and luxury are at, are at odds, but they don't have to be. So I like that about the brand. The fresh version or fresh version, if you'd like, does remind me of the one that came out last year, but it offers like a fresh energetic spin to it. It's much more energetic. It's more vibrant. It's brighter. If you can imagine a perfume being bright, I would say that the new fresh version is that. So you do get your nice roses, you get your nice floral accords that you do get with the classic eau de toilette. But the classic eau de toilette is more musky. You get some woody notes, you get some pink pepper, but I think overall it's a feminine, more musky, powdery scent, which is lovely. It's very feminine, very floral, very spring, but I think I prefer the fresh version because there's something just like more energetic, more zesty, and it's this like bright crystalline scent that comes in the fragrance. I think it's like maybe some orange zest. There's something there that's just a little bit lighter and a bit fresher that I really enjoy. You do get some musky and woody notes as well, but they're not as prominent. It's really more of like a brighter, fresher, more energetic take on the eau de toilette. That being said, if you like the eau de toilette, the classic one, you're also going to like this one here because it has a very similar DNA. It's just a lighter, brighter take on it. And I think if you also enjoyed the YSL Parisienne perfume, I don't know when that one came out, but I think if you like that one, you would also enjoy this one. And if you like the Chanel Chance collection, I would say if you like the classic Chance, the Eau Tendre as well, because that one is the pink one, you know, the Chanel Chance in the pink bottle that has this like grape, fruity, effervescent, bubbly scent. You would really like this one too, because it, because it has that sort of like very youthful, bright, sparkly um, affectation to it. So. It's a lovely fragrance. I'm definitely going to spritz this, especially going into spring because, ooh, this would be really lovely for Valentine's Day. You know, just like very feminine, a little bit sexy, just like, yeah, it's a great fragrance. So for spring, for Valentine's Day, this is a great scent. So I think that is it for today's video. I have done a full face. I have added a fragrance, a new perfume. Thank you Givenchy for sending this out. It smells so lovely. And it also has a very long wear, I would say several hours, which is very impressive for eau de toilette. Sometimes eau de toilette sort of like evaporates, but this lasted a very long time. And it also lasts on your clothing too. And as far as the Tom Ford eyeshadow palette goes, it wears really amazing. Like during the day, it doesn't crease, it doesn't flake off, it really stays in place. But I always wear an eyeshadow primer. I just knocked into my uh, kit over here. But yeah, I always wear an eyeshadow primer, but I didn't notice it moving or smudging. So overall, top to bottom, we have a lot of winners today in my little get ready with me, playing with some new makeup, some brand new. Again, the other Tom Ford video will be up either way before this or after this, time will tell whenever I get the other palette here. So if you're new to my channel, please take the time to subscribe. If you're already subscribed, make sure that you double check that you're still subscribed because sometimes YouTube likes to unsubscribe you for mysterious reasons. But anyway, leave a comment down below letting me know what you wanna see next, what other new makeup releases you wanna see in a get ready with me tutorial and let me know if you want me to use the same Mink Mirage eyeshadow palette mixed with something else, I think maybe like a beautiful shimmer shadow would be really complementary to this palette here. It could be very versatile. Like maybe the Sisley Sparkling Topaz, that would be a great combination. But anyway, I think that is all I have for you guys for today. Thank you all so much for stopping by. Hope you have a beautiful day and I'll see you next time. Bye.